All right, the moment is finally here. Today we are going to install the new Mitsubishi MHI 18K Turbo from Force Performance on my Evo 10. But uh, not just the turbo, we got a new in, uh, manifold. So this is the uh, matte manifold. I'll pull this heat shield off in a second. But I've also got this Thermal Zero blanket to cover the manifold. So you can see a nice pretty manifold, stainless steel cast. Unfortunately, it's gonna be covered up but that's okay. So we're gonna do this install today. I'm gonna walk you through some of it. The Evo, as you saw in the last couple of videos, we did fuel system mods. That was all in preparation for this turbocharger. So now that we've got the fuel system in and somewhat tuned, well, pretty well tuned, we're gonna go ahead and stick this turbocharger in and take this sucker to the next level. Anyways, let me uh, show you what I'm going to start with. So if you're doing this at home, I found the best tutorial online was from Garrett, actually. Since Garrett makes a 3071-76R drop-in turbos, they have a nice um, how-to. If you go to the page for vehicle-specific and find the Mitsubishi Evo 10, scroll down to the download section, you have these installation instructions, PDF format which basically gives you the full walkthrough of what you need to do to swap the turbo out in one nice document. So um, we're, we're gonna kind of follow this, except for the fact that my Evo 10's already got some mods on it. So like my under tray is different and uh, well, my downpipe's different, but I would suggest going through these instructions on Garrett's website and following them. They're gonna be the most in-depth in in instructions you can find, I believe. Um, but I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis as I go through mine. I might not film everything, but I'll show you what I'm doing essentially. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all of the stuff on top before I jack the car up and do anything. So basically the upper intercooler pipe, the intake manifold, the strut tower bar, some of the heat shields, and then we're going to jack the car up, pull the under tray off, and do some stuff down below. So... One moment and we'll be right back with all this stuff removed. And there we go, we removed it all. Um, so we've taken out the heat shields, we've taken out the inlet tube and the outlet tube for the turbo. Put off some of the lines, the intake, the upper intercooler pipe. And I've also went ahead and I've put some PB blaster on these bolts so that they come out easily. Next, we're gonna go ahead, loosen the downpipe bolts before we take the manifold out. So I'm gonna do this next and we'll be back in one moment. All right, we got the manifold out, but it was not without casualty. So let me show you what's going on. Got the stock manifold here and the matte manifold and I had some challenges getting it out. We'll start with these broken bolts. So this was going into the turbine housing, holding the downpipe on, pretty much just snapped. This happens a lot. So if you ever do a turbo swap, be prepared. Secondly, to pull the manifold out, you have these two studs, which are in the turbo. And um, there's a couple ways you can get them out. You know, you can use the two nut method, which is what I did. But as you can see, the last couple threads galled up on both of them. So you basically take two nuts, you jam them together and use it to back the stud out. So on the turbocharger, the stock one that's in the car right now, these two threads have probably got some stripping going on. What I'll probably do is have them uh, have them retapped or chased or something. So once we get this sucker out of here, completely out, we'll deal with all the broken bolts because it's a good turbocharger and uh, maybe someone needs one. I don't because we got this bad boy going in, but. That, that turbocharger literally has like 5,000 miles on it since this is a new engine, new turbo, do everything. So once we got the under tray off, one of the first things we want to do is go ahead and open that petcock, drain all the coolant into a bucket. Because uh, otherwise it's going to come out when you pull the turbo off, so we're going to get as much of it out as we can here. The next day. There we go. And coolant all over the floor. All right. Now, in theory, this should come out. Ah. 
All right, turbocharger out. All right, so we got the turbocharger out. Let me show you the aftermath of all this uh, because didn't, well, we'll just show you. So of course, we managed to get it out and get a lot of coolant everywhere. And I mean everywhere. In fact, everywhere. Yeah. Basically, there was a, uh, yeah, right there. There was one more coolant line, which I had to pull at the last minute. Couldn't get my hands around it earlier. So I pulled it as I was taking the turbo out, and of course this whole tube was still filled with coolant because when I drained it, the front end of the car was up high and this hadn't drained. So uh, yeah, we made a big mess. And we also got a little bit of oil on the floor, but I cleaned that up already. Here's our old turbocharger. When I say old, I mean 5,000 miles. It's really not that old. And uh, here we go. We're ready. Well, I take that back. We're not quite ready. I'm going to go online, order some stuff. We had some casualties. We had two studs and a bolt, which are Dunskis. And uh, a lot of other hardware I took out. So you have a lot to look forward to if you're going to do a turbo swap in your garage. kind of wish I had a lift. Anyways, this is the end of part one. I'm going to order some parts, and I'll do all the install as part two. Thanks for tuning in.